220 miles an hour. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, it's a cracker. Holy shit, the Jeeps are attacking. It's a Jeep. Come on, Aston, come on. Alright guys, my name is Frank and welcome back to Forza Horizon 3 for a new episode of Fueled Up. I hope you like the new intro. If you don't really like it, I'll go back to the old one. Um, I'm prepared to do that anyway because I just wanted to see what you guys would make of it anyway. So yeah, today's review is the McLaren 570S. The reason why I'm driving this thing is because I remembered back in Forza Motorsport 6 that everyone was complaining, including me, that it has too much understeer. Now, this being a Horizon game, it's meant to be a wee bit more arcadey, a wee bit more drifty and everything. So I thought I may as well drive it and see if Playground have kind of tweaked with it and we can actually get it sideways a bit more because I do agree with the general amount of the public saying that it does understeer a tad too much. So yeah, we're here at Byron Bay. We're going to go around the little town for a wee bit and then we'll head up into the rainforest. Not bad sounding man, I like that. But anyway, this thing has the exact same 3.8 litre twin turbo V8 in basically all of the McLaren range because the 12C had it, the 650S, the 675LT, the P1, etc, etc, etc. I could go on for a while. But I think in their newest model that's going to be coming out soon, I hope they actually put a different engine in. I mean, I've got nothing against this engine or anything like that. I just want something fresh from McLaren and supposedly this is meant to be a fresh car, it's meant to be a lot more fun, it doesn't care about lap times and I actually applaud McLaren for that because all they've been about recently in recent years is just lap times, lap times, lap times, how fast can we go around a corner, how fast can we do this, just let your freaking hair down, have some fun man and that's what this thing is supposed to be all about. So yes, we'll see if we can get the arse out around Byron Bay, but I must say, oh there we go, there we go already, a little bit of second gear power does the job, oh god, <laughs> friggin the game is not coping yet again, but anyway, I'm liking it so far, we need to go into some corners at a wee bit more higher speed, just so that we can test the understeer, but no, it's actually wanting to oversteer, so... I might be pleasantly surprised by this, I'm not too sure, but there, there's a tad still there, there's a teeny teeny tiny tad bit of understeer still there, but it is not as bad as what it was, seriously, it is not as bad, this is like the perfect road to actually demonstrate it, right okay, <laughs> okay there was a bit there, there was a bit there, I would say it's a lot more chopping and changing its mind in this game because in 6, in Forza Motorsport 6, it was just understeering all the time but in this, if you kind of suggest it, you kind of tickle it and make it a little bit more happy with you, it will let the arse go out, it will quite blooming easily let the arse go out, I had to blooming kick the handbrake there just to get it going a wee bit, but so far so good. So far so good, it is a bit better than Forza Motorsport 6, so we'll check out the interior. Now I've always loved McLaren interiors because they are simple, but at the same time they're beautiful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you've got the big sort of iPad touch screen in the middle of the dashboard, kind of like a Tesla. But to be honest, I've sat in a, a P85D at the Ignition Festival and the Tesla looks so much better in terms of the interior, so yeah. <laughs> It's not far off, but I think the Tesla just nips it, because the screen in that thing, holy shit, it is ginormous, absolutely ginormous, but if you're looking for a supercar with a good interior, and you want to use it every day, then McLaren is one of the best, because Ferrari, as we've seen with the 458, and I'm sure with the 488 as well, all the controls are on the steering wheel, but not with McLaren, they keep it nice, simple, just flappy paddles, and that's it. On you go, go ahead and drive. So I've got to give them my hat off for them for that. Anyway, let's knuckle down a wee bit and test it on these long winding rainforest roads. There we go. <laughs> it's a very, very 
um, what's the word? It handles via the throttle. I know that might make no sense, but you know what I mean? Like, it's it's a car in which you can put it where you want via using the gas or the accelerator. Because obviously in other cars, you do a lot of fine tuning to the actual steering stuff when you're just like driving around a corner and stuff. But with this, if you just want to get around the corner in a way that you want it to, just boof the gas. Seriously, it encourages it. Unlike in some Ferrari models, which if you do do that, you'll end up in a hedge. You really, really will. But this thing is pretty good. Now, the steering itself, it's it's not the most direct McLaren I've ever driven, but it's still it's still playful. It is still playful, and that's kind of the point with this thing. It's not a big oh GTR P1 track hugging monster. It's a road car. It's meant to be driven on the roads. It's meant to have fun on the road. Go through this section here. Not clipping the Audi. Thank you very much. Now, Motor Trend have actually named this their car of the year. Or their driver's car of the year. And I can see why, but at the same time, I'm like, it went up, up against some very good competition and I did not expect it to win because you know Motor Trend, whenever there's a Porsche in it, they freaking put the Porsche in number one spot. But I was gobsmacked. Me and Andy were actually watching it. I was like, what? So they put the Porsche in third place, I think it was. Then second place, it was the Shelby GT350R, which I really wanted to win because I was kind of rooting for the underdog. I mean, the Mustang is kind of like the underdog when you compare it to like the Porsches, the McLarens, Ferraris, etc, etc. So I was really glad to see that thing in second place. It looks like it's going to get a wee bit foggy now, so we might need to watch ourselves when we're going around the corners here. Fingers crossed it doesn't start to rain, but another thing I forgot to say is, thank you Ram, you bastard. Thank you for literally ramming me. No, I don't want to turn into Leafy by saying literally all the time. Literally, literally, literally. Fucking don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, apart from the ram hitting me there, I actually want to talk about the colour because I haven't had a McLaren in red yet and this isn't one of the standard colours. It's not one of the manufacturer colours I should say. It is one of the standard colours though. I've just decided to paint it red because I don't see many red McLarens, especially 570Ss and it looks very nice in it indeed. Very, very good indeed. I mean, other colours that were available were like a, a Mantis green, uh, orange, the McLaren orange and stuff like that, but the red really goes with it. It really, really does go with it, but I think we've had enough grippy testing and stuff like that. Let's actually see if we can get it sideways properly. That is the main goal for the video. That's what we started off to do. But this area isn't exactly the best for drifting, but we'll give it a blast. Yeah. <laughs> yep, you can still get it sideways. I know it's Forza, but you can tell subtle differences between cars. Because I've driven a lot of the cars in the game, and you definitely can tell subtle differences. Because I know there's going to be a few people saying, Oh, how can you tell the difference? It's cars in video games, it's not real life. Trust me, the way Forza do things, you can tell the difference. And I know a lot of you are going to agree with that, guys. So, yeah, I think we'll head back up this road right now. A bit of a drift. Is this a drift section? Yes, it is. What is it with dodges today, man? Holy shit. So what we're doing is jumping up to Surfer's Paradise, guys. The area that I was in doesn't really have really good drift sections, so we're going to go to the main city. Since it has a lot of chain link sections, we're going to do that and have some fun with the 570S. Now, I almost forgot to talk about the specs. Now, apart from it having the exact same 3.8 litre twin turbo V8, it has 562 horsepower, 442 foot-pounds of torque, 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds, and it has a top speed of 202 miles an hour. So you're talking basically the exact same sort of figures that the sort of Ferrari 458 had. And yeah, I mean, if this thing came out when the 458 first came out, I don't know, seriously, because I have a feeling this is what the 12C should have been. I don't know if he's agree with that, but I, I think, I 
think that's what it should have been. And it kind of feels like McLaren is trying to sweep the 12C away, if you know what I mean, because we had the 12C, we had the Spider. that's probably my favourite version of that, but like a couple of years later we've got the 650S and we're like, yes, this is a all new car, it's all improved and everything, they're just trying to forget the 12C, because they know that not many people liked it, I personally did, I did quite like it, but... Mm, I don't know. I really, really don't know. I've just got that sort of feeling that this is what the 12C should have been. And I think McLaren do know that. Oh, God, my knees are in the way. So, anywho, let's get sideways. Dodging the Audis. Oh, I nearly slammed into that pillar there, man. But yeah, the steering feels like it is set up to drift, which is very, very encouraging. For like a mid-engine supercar. I mean, this is high praise, right? I know we were just talking about the 458 Italia, but it feels like one of them, but less kind of less. What's the word? Edgy, because with the 458, when you turn it in, it's like really, really quickly. But this takes its time. It's nice and smooth and everything, and it's actually really paying off for that. It's really paying off because. With the 458, you need to watch yourself because it is so fast in terms of the steering. You're like, oh shit, where am I going to be? Where, are, where am I going to be at in like two seconds? But this, you know where you're going to be at because it likes to take its time. So yes, McLaren have got the steering, in my opinion, absolutely bang on. But in terms of the main reason that we're trying to figure out here, understeer, as you can see right now, you can cure it as much as you want in this game. Thank you, Playground. Thank you so much. Seriously. Because it was a pain in the arse. It really was a pain in the arse in Forza Motorsport 6. Even there, look! It's bloody turning in so smoothly. Try and get a wee bit more speed up for this big corner coming up. Circle back around. <laughs> oh, it's such a good car for second gear blooming let offs. Go, 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 go. Break, 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 break. Shit. Why did you have to ruin the fun there, Manny? I was going to turn in and get a good drift. Yes, that's it. And it doesn't even really hit off the rev limiter unless you're, like, properly banging it. And that's very good to see. Bloody hell, BMW, why did he brake check me? What is up with it? AI cars today, man. They're like, yeah, EK is just trying to find a good bit of this McLaren. Let's just fuck it up royally. <laughs> oh, I love them and I hate them at the same time. They're a pain in the arse when recording. They're normally behaving quite well when I'm driving myself, but nope. As soon as the camera's gone, as soon as the recording software comes out, they're like little bitches. They are little tiny bitches, just like that Tesla. Motherfucker. So that's actually got me thinking, I might be doing a face-off between this and a certain other car, guys, so get hyped for that. Yep, Forza Face-Off is coming back pretty soon, and it's going to be alongside Back to the Future, which is kind of like the old versus new series, but I know a lot of you wanted to see that series back, and I thought, may as well do it. May as well do it, because there is some cars that I really want to face off against each other, and Bear in mind, you know me, I don't really give a shit about lap times, I don't really give a crap about um, basically how fast the car is, it's how it makes you feel. So yeah, <laughs> if you want to see like a proper face off like lap times and stuff, then you may as well go to another channel. Mind is all about the driving experience. So yes, be prepared for that sunny boys. So anyway, has the McLaren 570S finally been tweaked enough in Forza to make it a really, really fun car which lets you drift and not understeer. I think this actually <laughs> it answers it itself and we nearly span because it is a mid-engine car and you have to watch yourself when you are doing that. So yeah, anyway guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the 570S. Have you driven it? Have you noticed the differences between Forza 6 and Horizon 3? I certainly have and it is definitely one little supercar or sports car because McLaren somehow classed this as a fucking sports car. I don't know why, but yeah, 
I, I really, really, really enjoyed driving this thing, and I wasn't expecting that. Really was not expecting that. So, yep. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you have enjoyed it, then a like is always appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you are brand new for more content from me. But from me and the baby knack, we shall see you in my next video. Bye-bye.